Hello, um, <laughs> hello, subscribers, patrons, fans, followers, supporters, and generally anyone who happens to stumble across my videos. This is Johnston Blackhorse with another edition of How to Art. And uh, today we're going to just continue last week's thing of um, how to draw, how to draw the buttocks. Yeah. How, how to draw them booty butt cheeks. But anyway, before I get started, just to give you a little preview of what I've been working on throughout the, over the weekend and just um, working on these sketches, as you can, uh, as you can see, just kind of cleaning them up before I do the transfer process. Oh, let me just name them off. Uh, this is uh, Carmelita Fox. Um, this is Minerva Mink. Oh, uh, wow. Wow, Devin just uh, came on, says, uh, I watched the last tutorial. Interesting. <laughs> glad you glad you thought it was interesting. I, uh, I, I <laughs> I think I struggled on the last one a little bit, but anyway, um, <clears throat> just continuing with the little preview of what I've been working on. Um, this is Crystal from the Star Fox universe. This is a uh, Lola Bunny, a gadget uh, from the Rescue Rangers. A uh, blank sheet of paper. This one was really challenging to work on. And this is a very, very immaculate piece. This is a commission that I'm currently doing, just uh, cleaning it up and just uh, getting the line work in there. And this is all before the transfer process. Like these aren't the final lines or anything. These are just um, kind of like the, the, the rough line work before I actually get down to uh, transferring it onto a piece of cardstock. And um, if you look, a lot closer than you can see on the on the video like some of the some of these lines are just really rough and i just really went in there with a really rough um uh ink work and uh here's slappy squirrel just uh being a cougar that she is oh um oh wow devon asked if these were all commissions no some of them are auctions and well, i guess half are auctions half are commissions Here's a trio of uh, um, Sticks the Badger, Cream the Rabbit, and Marine the Raccoon. And here's another commission, uh, as stated earlier, in like uh, just a, the third installment of this piece here. This this is a third installment of a series, and uh, yeah, just um, what I've been working on throughout the throughout the weekend and. Uh, uh, all, all that good stuff. But anyway, um, let's get on with the lesson. Drawing. Okay, here's here's the rough lesson from, I guess, uh, last week. Just going over the basic shape of the uh, buttocks area and just, uh, just drawing it in different poses. Drawing the buttocks in different poses just uh, with the... Uh, with the model attached or with the figure attached. And I guess I'll just continue doing that same thing. And I um, guess I'll just uh, see if uh, make a bit of a landscape piece, maybe just rough in the, the posterior region here. And um, as you can see, I'm like doing like a big like oval to just kind of like get an idea of the, I guess the pelvic region, like in, in the previous ones, like I utilized the, uh, utilized the box, but um, let's uh, go ahead and just do like a, like a long ellipsis shape and just kind of like uh, bisect that just to get the um, shape of the buttocks in there. And from the top here, just carry that forward or up a little bit more just to get the curvature of the spine. And I guess what I'll be drawing in this little sketch here is just some, some female figure twerking, I guess. Is, is twerking still a thing? Is twerking still relevant? I don't know. I've been, I've been away for a while. I'm just so, 
out of the loop with um, just uh, popular memes and and dance moves and not that I really danced all that much anyway. But um, we'll just draw this as a or I'll I'll just draw this as a twerking sketch. <laughs> Uh, wow, Devin says uh, he hopes that twerking isn't relevant anymore. I, I don't think it is. Like, I, it's been a while since I've heard anything about twerking or anything. Maybe she just doesn't have to twerk at all. Just um, get that booty in there. And right now I'm just drawing like somewhat of a shape for the thigh. That uh, will come in. It's more or less following like um, the um, line where the underwear would go and just keeping in mind where the, the hip joins the, um, where the leg joins the hip right around here. And I'm gonna put like a little like a line in there just to indicate like the 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 fold in the skin where that would uh, where that would occur And here on the other side, I'm drawing like a rough shape for the, the thigh again, just connecting to this um, other, other side of the, well, the other hip. And here, as you can see, I'm just kind of like drawing a small little curve to indicate the, uh, um, The <laughs> private region, but I'm not going to be drawing any any detail, of course, just to just to get that form in there, because of course, like I'm going to be drawing this figure clothed, but uh, just drawing the the shapes and forms of all the nooks and crannies that uh, are present. There's something in my paper. Is that? It's like a little piece of debris somewhere in here. Where are you? There it is. What is that? Gross. It seemed like it was a booger or something. How did a booger get in my friggin' sketchbook? I hope it wasn't a booger. Maybe it was a like a small piece of glue or something that just got in there. I don't, I don't know. But it did have the shape, color, and consistency of like a, a dried booger or something. Did this did this sketchbook come prepackaged with someone's dried boogers in it? Nah. Maybe it was uh, left by me some some drunken night many many years ago. So here I'm going up to the elbow, just um, not elbow, the, the shoulder and drawing like a little sphere for the shoulder and just uh, bringing that down and just doing like a rough shape of a little rough circular shape to indicate like the position for the hand. And in between these two, I'm going to do like a little shape for the elbow. I'm I'm going like way into detail of like other body parts when I'm supposed to be focusing on the uh, on the posterior region, the the buttocks. But it, more or less, it is the focal point of this sketch. So if you if you'll bear with me. <clears throat> I 
drawing some lines to indicate the shoulder blades. Just roughing in the curvature of the spine. It goes up to the neck. And just kind of like uh, turning the neck slightly just to give the impression that this character is going to be looking back toward the viewer. Doing a little circular uh, shape here for the ear. Following the bottom of the ear down with the jawline. The jawline is going to be behind the shoulder right there. Bring that up to the chin. And then bring that back up to the other side of the face. And right now I'm just drawing like a vertical or horizon line for the um, division of the of the face, just like right down, right down the middle. And the horizontal um, division line where the eyes would sit on. Of course, these are all like little um, things that I went over in previous how to art videos. I would be playing music, but um, I had uh, issues with my one of my previous videos where it was um, restricted in other countries for having a song. Uh, I think it was uh, Black Betty. And apparently that song is restricted in other countries. So now that um, that video is not available in those countries where it's restricted. And I thought that was... Uh, I thought that was a shame because um, <clears throat> I don't want to compromise the video and like um, silence that segment where the song is playing for fear of like uh, not having my audio there to discuss anything that may be relevant to, uh, for for whatever I was talking about or whatever art um, subject I may be discussing or. <clears throat> thing of that sort, but it, it is a shame that uh, that video won't be available in other countries just because of the song. So in order to not risk that scenario anymore, I'm just going to refrain from playing any music and it kind of sucks. It's, it means, means these videos are going to be a little quiet from now on. It's just going to be that much more silent, perhaps a little boring. Uh, just me talking and drawing, but uh, I, I don't know how appealing that would be, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, just reading the chat, uh, Wow Devin says, uh, he hates when that happens. I'm sure all artists relate. And oh yeah, good point on the last tutorial. He spent a lot of time drawing the hand instead of the booty butts, which I don't mind. He also says I'd rather, oh, I guess this is pertaining to the music right here. I'd rather just hear your butter, <laughs> your butter-like voice anyways, so it's fine. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's, it's very flattering. Just think of it as you and the pencil, the Bob Ross of sketching anatomy and whatnot. <laughs> Sweet. I guess I'll just uh, keep at it then. And right here, I'll draw like a slight orb for the breast. Just uh, go ahead and make her well endowed. You know, why not? This this is your world. So <laughs> happy, happy boobs, happy boobs. There we go. Now, now I am the Bob Ross of uh, sketching anatomy. Make the breasts any size you want because this is your world. Make the breasts a little too big. You know that's the, those, that's a happy accident. Next, you'll see me on <laughs> PBS, just teaching the mass populace how to. How to draw boobs and butts and all sorts of voluptuous women and and in provocative clothes or provocative provocative um, well I guess provocative clothing and position in provocative poses. Hey, shoot! I'd watch it. 
and all I need is a fro. I rather enjoy like doing these uh, how to arts, uh, doing the live streams of them. Like the first one was a little shaky. Like I think I was just kind of like um, a bit nervous, but I'm glad it uh, came out decent. And um, this one's not as, uh, I don't think I, I, I'm, I, I'm as nervous as I was the first time, but uh, I like the, um, the interaction in the chat, like I can, Look back every now and then just to see what the, what's going on in the chat, what how or uh, how people are taking the lesson, or just um, any any notes people can give me on the fly or whatever. Okay then. There we go. Let me see. Sometimes I, I've noticed that sometimes I draw things a little skewed, so, or. Uh, quite a, quite a bit because um I, I'm drawing like uh, with my um well seated a little bit of ways from the actual drawing just so um I'm not looking over my artwork because if I do like my, my head would get in the way such as that and like uh Oftentimes I'll look up at the screen and see see how I'm doing in the in the drawing department and like um, since I'm drawing at an angle like uh, things will get a little skewed sometimes because the way I perceive it at the angle I'm at it would seem correct but then when I look at the camera which is looking straight on at the drawing like it'll reveal uh, the skewed angle at which I'm at which I'm drawing. So like uh, sometimes when things are skewed, like I'm just kind of like looking at the page at this sort of angle in a sense. And then to my perspective, it may seem correct, but uh, to the camera's perspective, it's just, uh, it's just horribly wrong. Oh my God. What's wrong with that drawing? It's, it's horribly askew. The proportions are all off. It's terrible. But, uh, I try to refrain from doing that. Like I'll, I'll look up at the at the monitor every now and then just to make sure I'm still I'm still on point. But uh, anyway, I think this is good for this uh, this figure. Let's uh, move on to another pose. Mm -hmm. Wow, Devin says, "Ah, oh, I get what you mean. I've live streamed on Instagram while sketching. Are you able to get in kind of?" For shortening of the booty butt, like a high perspective or something, that would be interesting. A high perspective. So, are you talking about uh, something where you're like looking down at the figure? Oh shoot! I wish I had. Oh, I used to have these like figurines. There's one somewhere. I think my sister took it when she moved out. <laughs> anyway. Um, So are you talking about a high angle piece? So if the character were standing like this, okay. Yes, that's what he means. So just a quick example, I guess, or just, <laughs> it's not gonna be quick, but um, just go ahead and make this the next figure. Here's the head. And this pose 
is going to be a little stiff because I'm just going to draw it as like a female character just standing at attention in a line or, or something. Maybe she's a, this figure's like a futuristic uh, type of android that you can just buy at the store. So they're, like they're maybe they're just lined up. And here we get like a rear perspective. But as you can see, like I'm um, just kind of drawing the shoulders in a bit. And let me go ahead and just kind of rough in the spine. And I, like uh, I went ahead and like drew some like a, really rough perspective lines just to give myself like a basic um, point of reference to follow. So here I drew the head and here I'm drawing the rib cage. And from the head, like I'm just gonna be following like the neck, which will curve here like that. And then on the rib cage, the spine curves on the back like this, but then when you get down to the pelvic region, it just kind of swoops in and then it swoops back out when you get down to the, the pelvic bone as it's connected to that. So here in the pelvis, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like a, an ellipse just to encompass the pelvic region. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, bisect that ellipse to get uh, them booty butts fleshed out. And as you're sketching, it's like as you're sketching, you just have to feel out the um, the anatomy, just uh, what, what looks proper and what feels proper. So in a sense, like um, oftentimes when I'm sketching, like I get the sensation that I'm somewhat sculpting. And I, I guess that would be a good like mindset to bear when you're sketching a figure is that um, you have to think of it as a sense of like you're sculpting something in three dimensional space, but you're utilizing a two dimensional plane in order to convey that idea or that feeling. So oftentimes when I'm sketching like a, a figure for whatever thing I'm drawing, be it an auction or a, a commission, and there's like a humanoid figure in there, like I try to think of it in the, in the sense of like I'm, I'm using my pencil to sculpt this figure. So as you're sketching, like you got to get the idea in your head that you're trying to um, more or less sculpt this figure in a three-dimensional setting, but in this two-dimensional world, this two-dimensional plane that you have in front of you. And it really does help if you really study your anatomy. I, I think I'm due for like um, uh, like a, just revisiting a lot of these books and uh, drawing drawing them again. Because oftentimes I'll take like a composition book and um, as you can see, like I'll draw like uh, certain areas which I'm like either having issues with or need to uh, touch back on and just like remind myself how to draw like the anatomical structure, like um, just drawing and referencing like these books just to um, remember how to do it. And oftentimes like I'll put like uh, my own sketches in like various poses and then utilizing this book or like the drawings that I've made and just um, overlaying like the anatomical structure over this over the rough figures that I've drawn. And, yeah, and here are like a few figures that I've drawn and just like uh, keeping in mind like all the important lines that um, that like uh, 
the, all the important cuts or the forms that uh, just make the body. And yeah, like uh, oftentimes I'll just go in and just redraw these forms again and again, just so I can get the um, idea just ingrained in my head. And here's some more poses that I've just drawn off my off the top of my head and just overlaid um, things that I've learned just from drawing these. And as you can see here, I've tried to <laughs> write down some of the um, some of the muscles as I draw them just to just to try to remember them. Like <laughs> sometimes they'll stick, but then like um, like again, it's the, the 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 brain is a muscle, and if you don't flex that muscle a lot, you'll you'll lose that. So of course, like I, I'm really good at drawing muscles, but I I suck at naming them. So like of course I've forgotten a lot of these an proper anatomical names. So you, this is something I recommend that you do, especially when you're trying to study anatomy or just need to refresh yourself, like. Um, after doing like some of these like uh, basic straight from the book like studies, like go ahead and just draw out some of your own poses and then overlay like what you've learned or what you've studied on top of the poses that you just sketched out, which I've done here and I should probably try doing again sometime in the near future. There isn't anything lewd in here, is it? Yeah, they're slightly lewd, but not not terribly lewd, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's keep this fairly clean, I guess, in a sense. Uh, wow, Devin says, uh, down right and all uh, right, right. Wow, very informative. He says he's going to buy this book. Hopefully it's on the Play Store because because he lives in the middle of nowhere. And he asks, would I say it was a good choice? And I would say yes. It's, um, it's a very good choice in, uh, artist, uh, in buying an artistic anatomy book. And just like from um, studying these books, you just get the sense of um, where certain certain things are, uh, how, how certain things are formed, or where 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 they um, where they're connected. I noticed uh, Wow Divin has called me Johnston Senpai. He's like, uh, you're like the second person that's ever called me Senpai. The first one who's ever called me Senpai was a coworker back in uh, one of these other um, gaming, casino gaming companies I used to work for. And he was a... Uh, he was a fairly decent artist when I first met him. Like uh, he, he was, he was okay. Like he showed some promise, and then after spending some time with me and just uh, um, letting him, um, well, I guess uh, teaching him how I learned or went about uh, drawing things, he he improved drastically. Was, I was really impressed. So with a little bit of coaching and motivation, it was amazing how. How, how much um, how much improvement I saw within like just a I, I would say like a few months to a year and just comparing his old stuff to his uh, more recent stuff it was just um, just a night and day uh, sadly like last I heard he hasn't kept up with his drawings and I have no or <laughs> I have no idea where he may be now. 
But um, I guess working for that um, evil company that uh, I've talked about several times before it just really killed uh, the, the the artistic drive in him because um, that that company didn't work. Th that company didn't reward creativity. It w rewarded obedience, and it was uh, it was no place for any artist to be creative. I just noticed that I made this figure looking back at the viewer again. I guess that's just a pose that I enjoy. I, I don't think I, I think I was set, setting this up to make her look that way, but um, I, I think I, whenever I draw a figure, I like that uh, interaction with the viewer. And I think that was noted by like one of my fans who enjoys my Natus work, who is actually female, by the way, and I was surprised to know uh, or learn that. And she stated that uh, in a lot of my work, uh, my Natus work especially, um, there there's just a lot of interaction with the viewer. Like the 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 characters themsel themselves don't really interact with each other. So like uh, I would have two characters interacting um, in one scene, but um, it's not like they would really acknowledge the other or like the, 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 the main female focal point of the piece wouldn't be acknowledging the, or her male counterpart should be just um, interacting with the viewer by making eye contact with the viewer. And she stated that um, she asked that I do like more romantic pieces in which the the female and the male would be interacting and just kind of like looking longingly into each other's eyes. And um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Like uh, it's something that I never really acknowledged in my work. I always just have fun just having the character or the, the focal character interacting with the viewer just by making the eye contact. And like, I never really thought of like having like a intimate reaction or interaction of like the the uh, characters in the one in in the image, so it's something that I tried out and it was it was pretty it was pretty interesting and I like to do more um, in the future when I'm allowed. Hopefully that day will be coming sometime soon and like uh, I'm hoping to uh, reach out and get an update. But uh, I forgot. <laughs> No, it's terrible. I, I gotta get the the name of my attorney from my um my PO because I forgot his name. It's like I used he used to have all of his inf information with me while I was in prison, but like um, for some reason the U.S. Marshals won't allow you to travel with any of your paperwork, so they just leave it behind. And if you don't have an appropriate or like a written down address for you your stuff to be sent then it's just destroyed and it sucks because I just couldn't take any of that stuff with me. And the few things that I did have or have marked to send to my apartment here, like it, it never got sent. And it's just a really frustrating experience. But, um, Thankfully, like I guess uh, they, the 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 facility saved the stuff that I had marked to send to this address, so they never destroyed it. The issue was is that I didn't have the funds, but um, I thought I did, but uh, I guess I guess not. Uh, I also made arrangements to have them contact my sister, which never never took place, and. It was frustrating, but uh, in the end, like, I'm glad they kept my things just because of all the letters and requests that I sent. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, what's going on in the chat? Oh, a few other people have joined. 
Isaac Lobo says, do you use that tablet at all? <laughs> yes, I do. I, I use it for digital commissions, which I'm going to be starting here in a little bit once I'm done with the pile of commissions I have. Um, the A lot of the commissions I do are traditional. There are commissions that I do that are digital just because they're easier to do digitally. And I already cleared it with the guy who's um, commissioned the the digital stuff and he's, he's cool with it. Whatever makes the job easier because the digital commissions that I'm going to uh, start working on here shortly are um, like little model sheets to uh, model or utilize in 3d modeling. And wow, Devin says, ah, uh, and uh, then, Oh, <laughs> I guess wow. Devin says, ah, uh, in the, in reference to me talking about my Natus art and like uh, getting the request from a female fan to have more intimate uh, reactions, interactions with my characters. Um, well, I guess, you no, know, uh, with them interacting with each other, like the, the romantic eye, eye point, you know, or, or eye contact. <laughs> Dan Dolly says, evening, John. Good to see you on again creating. No, thank you, Dan. Uh, Devin says, "Ah, oh, yes, a female's perspective of hentai. That is good because us males miss li oh, lots of things." <laughs> Isaac Lobos says, "Nice." Um, thank you. Thank, thank all of you. Okay, so this is. Uh, Well, I know I didn't really talk too much about um, how to draw the buttocks at this angle, but I'm hoping like uh, if you are able to just visually follow along and just um, strain those visual learning muscles, I'm hoping you are able to get what I was doing. Because me being lost in conversation, I totally, yeah. It's like uh, I'm, I'm talking one minute, I look down, and then all of a sudden, like, the sketch is more or less complete. It's like, oh, when did that happen? Huh. I forgot to talk about all this stuff. But we're all artists here, right? We, we can all visually learn, just uh, visually assimilate everything that you see. Every sketch you make, every stroke you take, I'll be watching you. Mm. Um, Dan W says, at Wow Devon, very true female perspective. And yeah, I can relate about the loss of your earlier work. The legal dicks won't do anything unless you stay on top of them constantly. <laughs> yes, I got to reach out to them. As a globos is cool. Well, he says cool emoji. No, he didn't say literally cool emoji. He made a cool emoji. It's the emoji with the sunglasses. Um, Dan W says, have you, have your complete N01, et cetera, collection? No, um, they confiscated everything. Are you still on Pixiv? Um, my Pixiv account is still up, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not on there. I, I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of, uh, uh notifications on my, in my inbox, just um, um, let me know that uh, a lot of people are active on my Pixiv account. Um, Isaac Globo says, your art is indeed cool. Is there a chance to see you draw ponies? I guess I could do that for a let's draw. I haven't done a let's draw last, last week. I did. I did like a basic commissions and auctions, but not really a let's draw. Like usually I do let's draws to 
work on requests. And uh, I did get uh, some requests to draw um, some of the ladies from the cartoon. Which one? What is it called? Um, it's on the tip of my brain. Die, die, die cleaning something vampire. Shoot. Oh, okay. Here it is. Die Schule der kleinen Vampir. Yeah, I got some got some requested to draw some of the ladies from the cartoon Die Schule der uh, kleinen Vampir, and I should do a let's draw to finish these up. I think these are them. I think these are they. Here they are. I think I still have one yet to do. Here's the first one I did. And here's a rough of a second one. And then the third one. I don't think I've worked on the fourth one just yet. I think she's the Egyptian one. Yeah, I haven't worked on her. So I think I'll do these on like a upcoming let's draw as well as like drawing some some pony ladies. Oh, Dan W said Dan W in reference to my Natus underscore zero one collection saying like no, I was saying I have the collection. Oh wow, awesome. Well, like uh, I guess when everything is cleared up with me, I'm gonna ask you for that collection. Uh, I'm pretty sure like the whole collection's still floating around somewhere. And I wouldn't doubt that there are some pervs that work in the uh, freaking FBI building who sneak into the evidence locker and just wank off to my freaking Natus artwork. I bet you. Bet you dollars to donuts when I get it back. Some of the pages are going to be stuck together like, oh, man, no, this is terrible. I want, I want DNA like run on all these samples and I, I want to, I want to sue for defacing such priceless art and artifacts that you have tarnished history. This is awful. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So for this for this uh, session, we did uh, this pose. We did that pose. Wait, I thought like we did another one. No, no, we didn't. I guess I should do a third one. The third, um, the third one. Hmm. Oh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I was just reading reading the chat a little bit. Okay, back back to back to drawing booty butts. Uh, let's see. Um, Guess I'll do like a somewhat of a provocative piece. It's the only thing I could think of when doing uh, how to draw booty butt tutorials. So here I went ahead and drew an ellipse and I drew like a like a sphere kind of like bisecting that a bit and um, I 
here I'm drawing like indications for the um, where the muscles connect to the I want to call it the iliac crest but I don't know if that's what it's actually called uh, let's see yeah I think that's that is what it's called the portion here is called the iliac bone we're iliac crest yeah more or less that's Ilio lumbar ligament. Oh, those are ligaments. I would guess a more the proper or well it curves into the iliac crest, but it's also called the re-entering angle of the superior border. And um, it starts from the iliac tub tuberosity. Uh, well, I was in the ballpark. So, yeah. So here, roughing in the rib cage. This pose, this uh, this character is going to be like um, arching her back. And she won't be looking back at the viewer. Kind of like tossing her head back a bit. Drawing little spheres to indicate uh, her shoulders. <laughs> wow, Devin says, um, or asks, ah, you've been studying? Not really, just uh, some a little bit of knowledge retention from way back when when I used to study. <laughs> I, I should make time to study again, just to like uh, brush up on a lot of a lot of this uh, anatomy knowledge. Drawing little forms for the um, hands here. Drawing lines to go to the elbows. Drawing little indicators for the elbows. So I guess I'm drawing this character. Maybe she's sitting down backwards in a chair doing a... doing a very provocative dance of some sort. She's performing part of the dance where she's just clutching both of her both of her butt cheeks, both of her uh, gluteus maximus. Um, portions, her 
posterior orbs. Her jiggle jams, little Debbie's pudding cups. Derriere, her derriere down there. <laughs> Thanks, Wow Devin. I'm glad I could, um, I guess, I don't know, I, I just really had to speak my mind about a few things and just like um, talk about um, some of the re revelations that I've had or that I've come to while just sitting in my prison cell and just... Um, coming to the self discovery and you know like what what does that mean for me and what does that mean for everyone else because at the time for everyone else like uh i don't know i, I just don't want to be caught in a witch hunt and that's pretty much what it feels like when going through the legal process Um, I'm glad you appreciate you appreciate my insight. And it's um, just uh, kind of refreshing because I didn't get as much flack for that video as I thought I would. So, I'm hoping that's a sense like telling that um, maybe America is like close to a point where it's willing to become more open-minded or tolerant about these, these notions or just, uh, I guess, um, more keen to just dispelling a lot of the um, misinterpretations or um, letting go a lot of the, the stigma that has been instilled in society. Uh, but I'm imagining that I will make more videos of that nature, like um, in, in the near future, but they'll be animated. So here's hoping I can get around to finishing my first animated YouTube video. Like I keep talking about it and yet I haven't worked on it for maybe I think going on two weeks now, so I should really get cracking on that once I'm done with these uh, these set of commissions. And um, I'm I'm really hoping like it, it brings a brings in a lot of uh, support and just um, also just uh, in hopes to just be more informative and bringing bringing more information in a very a uh, neat little package su such as an animated informative video. Hmm. Um, wow, Devin says, and I clicked the link leading to your video. I've been subbed since. And he, oh, shoot. Before my laptop goes to sleep, I better plug it in. 
And he says, you surely will be a part of history of the freedom of art or whatever you would call it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm hoping to like make a major push toward that end, um, especially with these informative like uh, animated videos. Dan W says, "Geesh, I can only imagine. I wouldn't be too sure about the stigma thing. It may have to be a dark net project if things settle down and they lighten up on you a bit." Um, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go all balls out with it and just uh, tell tell everybody what I think and tell the the um, the uh, federal judicial system to pretty much <laughs> cram it in a sense because I, I believe the uh, the um, idea is that um, it, with with all these restrictions and the the stigma placed upon me that I, it would shame me into silence but um, fuck that. I gotta, I gotta be me. So like, I, I want to make all these animations and just more or less kind of be in everyone's face, but not in an aggressive way, just in the best way I can. <laughs> like being informative and like um, revealing the government's bullshit for what it is. And just like letting the people know that, uh, like, the, anyone in society is at risk of like facing these horrible allegations because nowadays in federal court, like, all they need is a uh, um, uh, supposition based on a quote unquote reasonable doubt of some sort. So in a sense, all they need is a suspicion in order to like imprison you. And then it's up to you to prove your innocence. Because uh, as I've stated time and time again, like everyone in American society nowadays with all the laws that we have on the books, everyone in society is either a felon or a potential felon. That's it. There's little to no in between there. And... I think a lot of people in society are just really ignorant of that fact. And for the most part, I think some of them are slightly aware, but um, they just need that, I guess, maybe person or that individual to rally behind to just like uh, point out all the bullshit for what it is and just uh, pull their finger out and point it at the government and say, Fuck you, enough's enough. Give me my drawings back. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, that, that's not what it all comes down to. All, it all comes down to just like, um, like with my artwork, I'm not the only one at risk. I mean, they already, th they already, they already threatened my family. And I think that was just a major foul on their part. And knowing that they're willing to go that far as to threaten my family is like everyone in society is at risk of being accosted by the government just for any trivial reason that they feel is necessary or that they think that they can get away with. And you know what? That's bullshit. And we got to hold all these people accountable for their nonsense. And I really do believe for the... Um, federal judicial system to do this. It's not only breaking the law, it's breaking the constitution uh, documents and like set of rules and guidelines and that should be held like sacred in this country. And for breaking that, like um, these uh, government officials or authorities who willingly trespass that constitution should have to suffer like major repercussions for their un-American acts in doing so because I, I stated like in several videos before it was just like um like we don't tolerate terrorism from like a like a foreign threat but yet we tolerate it from government officials who more or less utilize terroristic tactics utilizing fear in order to like um get what they want from us so I don't think that should be allowed or tolerated. So as long as we're like, um, if we can call them out on their bullshit and just show their bullshit for what it is 
and reveal to the world that they're just up to no good and a lot of their um, uh, unconstitutional trespasses were just very, um, I guess, nefarious in nature and they knew about it. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They should be held accountable to the full extent of the law for like uh, for these, I guess you could call them traitorous acts. And that's what I believe. And as your president, I will make sure that all these people suffer to the full extent of the law for all their unconstitutional trespasses because they didn't just break the law, they broke the constitution and we cannot stand for it. Joshua Black Horse for President, 2020. Let's take America back. I think three poses is good. How's the skit or <laughs> how's the chat doing? Um, Dan W says smiley, winky face. Well, Devin says like George Carlin. If you know what who know who he is, yeah, like friggin' George Carlin was awesome. Dan W says, yep, no more innocent till proven guilty. Icicle. Or Isaac Lobo says, uh, feelings is now enough to put a man in jail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like, we're getting to a point where it's like the only victims in a lot of these, in a lot of accusations nowadays, especially with the social justice, so SJW, like uh, movements or like um, society is like um, the only victims are just people's sensibilities. And it's just like fucking. <laughs> It gets to a point where it's like you can't utilize freedom of speech to encroach on other people's freedom of speech. I mean, that's just retarded. I mean, like this whole SJW movement and the whole SJW like concept is a, and society is just like it, it's just uh, oh gosh, it, <laughs> it frustrates me to no end, and like um. The, the the coin or the, the phrase that I like to refer to is that um, th and this phrase wasn't coined by me it was coined by another another inmate that I uh, spent time with and um, I says like yeah like today we're in a very PC culture and like he asked like what's PC protective cowards <laughs> like yes that's a perfect analysis for it we are a protective cowards culture and it's like we're walking on eggshells so afraid of offending anybody that we 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 guard our own speech we censor ourselves and we, we don't allow ourselves the freedom to just say what we want because people like um are utilizing freedom of speech to just uh negate everyone else's freedom of speech and we've become such a sissy babysitting culture that it's just it, it, it's not even America anymore. I mean, it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, like uh, going back to the chat, like what, what's what are people saying? And Dan W says, and the stream is going to crap. <laughs> May have to switch devices here. The family's threat threats don't surprise me at all. And it elite literally get away with murder. Yeah, like uh, Dan W was talking about um, how the 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 judicial federal judicial system threatened my family and it's just ridiculous and that's how a lot of these things go is that they get what they want by threatening like the defendant's families and that's how they get a lot of the um the um guilty pleas that make up a majority or like a, a major portion of the um their their um conviction rates 
So as long as they can get a conviction, they'll do whatever they want. They'll like threaten you. They'll threaten your family. And a lot of people like when their families start getting threatened, that's when they just throw in the towel and then go ahead and sign a guilty plea. And um, believe me, they were threatening my sister just for being a proximity of my artwork. And I, I was like, that's just, I don't understand how they can get away with that. I mean, like, that's something that I wouldn't stand for. And I think they feel that they can get away with it because they, they are under the assumption that the whole stigma and shame associated with my artwork and my offense will keep me silent. But like, you know what? Fuck that. Like, what the government's doing is just fucking back ass words and it needs to be rectified and I'm just the man to do it. So again, vote, uh, vote Johnson Black Horse 2020. <laughs> anyway, uh, wow. Devin says, haha, I will. And, uh, Isaac Lobo says, I will vote for you. Black Horse 2020. Wow. Devin says also fantastic artwork. Thank you. Cal Larkin just joined says, yo, Hey, what's up, Cal? Dan W says, yeah, and the crowd goes crazy. Yes, vote Johnson Black Horse 2020, and I'll see to it that uh, all these uh, people who trespass on the Constitution will suffer the major repercussions for their un-American acts. They'll all be executed. I'm sorry, there's just no, <laughs> there's no way around it. But um, only for um, federal government workers and people employed who willfully and knowingly violate the constitution to suit their own agenda and their own means. Those, those are the people who are going to have to face those severe repercussions. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I believe about it. Uh, Cal Larkin says, SJW slash feminism is a religion with heavy dogma. Yes, it's, it's, getting, it's getting really out of hand. And I think uh, as your president, I will uh, snack, snap people back into reality and just um, streamline the, the government and take out a lot of these frivolous laws and just say, Hey, like friggin' people, people have all the liberty and freedom that they want just so long as their freedoms and liberties don't encroach on the freedoms and liberties of other people. And I'm talking about actual freedoms and liberties. Like if you'd get insulted in any sort of way, then just friggin' turn the other cheek and don't, <laughs> don't be, be around those individuals or don't listen to that media or just uh, don't, don't bother. You know, like uh, it's no reason to just get all up in arms and get into other people's business and tell them how they, they sh how they should live their lives just to suit your sensibilities. I mean, you're, you're violating someone else's Liberty right there. You can't utilize freedom of speech to encroach on other people's freedom of speech. That's just, <laughs> I can't find any other word for it. It's just, it's just retarded. I mean, it's, it's nuts. Like friggin', you can't do that. Beware that, oh, uh, Isaac Lobo says, beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. I th I think I'm I think I in a sense I I might be but I'm I'm the monster that America deserves. <laughs> I, I'm the I'm the monster you bring in to just um, clean out all the other monsters. Just clean them all out of the closet. And when that's done, I'll just simply go into hibernation. Just fade away. Because you need a monster to eat all the monsters, right? <laughs> yes, I'm a monster you can trust.
I think I'll start working on some animation campaign stuff, just like uh, vote vote Black Horse 2020. I think that'd be pretty fun to work on. I'd like to somewhat mimic or just get the same sense and tone and feeling of that uh, that speech at the at the beginning of uh, Kill Zone. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I hope this doesn't uh, block this video in other countries if I utilize this or if I just play this a bit. Here we go. If I can get the same power in this little speech. Black people. Sons, Sons and daughters of Helgan. For many years, we have been a broken nation. Shunned, oppressed, and conquered by those we sought to escape. I asked for time, and that time was granted by you. You, you the strength, the strength of my arm, the holders of my dreams. Our, Our forefathers embarked on an exodus in the history, the history of all mankind. An exodus, an exodus for, for freedom. Helgan became that freedom. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let me just turn it up a little more. Stronger in the time you have given me, I have rebuilt our nation. I have rebuilt our strength. And I have rebuilt our pride. Our enemies at home have been re educated. We have given them new insights into our cause. On this day, we stand united once more. On this, on this day, day those driven to divide us will hear a voice. On, on this, this day, shall act as one, and we shall be beyond the Madam, sir, we get multiple hell gas vessels approaching. What do we do, sir? Fire! <laughs> Yeah. I want my speech to have that much impact. <laughs> oh, what, this girl? Yeah, she's pretty sweet. Pretty nice. Oh, I forgot to draw the rest of the chair. There we go. Okay. Well, did uh, did three poses for this drawing tutorial of how to draw or the continuation of how to draw booty butts is the first one. This was the second one, kind of like a um, like a downward uh, downward view. Just um, fix this little part here. 
as I stated, like uh, since I'm sitting at a weird angle, just so I don't get my head in the shot like this. Like I'll, I'll look up at the at the monitor every now and then just to make sure that I'm I'm spot on. And here's a third one. So I think we're I think we're good. I think we're good for this uh, this week's uh, hot hot. Yeah. I'm um, just checking on the chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, well, Devin says do it, I guess in reference to me animating a uh, little uh, um, uh, presidential promotions for, for myself. <laughs> he says he'll spread the animations around, make an animation around that audio. That's in reference to that uh, um, Kill Zone intro speech. Uh, Dan W at Wow Divin. Now that would be interesting. Yeah, I think it would. Yes, I agree. Indeed. Dan W says, John, your girl is getting sexier by the minute. So I think he's talking to this, talking about this one. What? This is this part's off. Once I look up at the screen, like I think that's a little too lopsided. Like they're they're you get the sense that they're huge already. I think looking at the monitor is like uh, the proportions are too lopsided. So just um, can fix that a little bit. Oh, and um. I'm going to look into setting up a Picarto or a Pixel uh, stream. I, I looked into it a little bit, and for the most part, they're they're digital streams. So I think I'll um, set up a like a little digital thing, and I want to make sure that I have like maybe um, a decent uh, avatar or whatever you need to put on the side there. Just for like, I guess my brand, I guess you would say. So uh, I'll look into that like later this week and see what I can do about getting all that set up. And uh, Dan Dilby says, oh, that sh uh, thought she was on a stool. Now she has a place to rest her movies. <laughs> yes, she does. Uh, wow, Devin says, thank you for the free toot. Toot. Not to toot my own horn, but toot. Anyway, uh, while Devin continues to say, people often wonder how I'm decent uh, at art. It's thanks to guys like you. So thanks. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> so I guess we'll wrap it up for this week's uh, How to Art. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. If you want to support more creation or uh, videos and more artwork from me, um, I do have a Patreon. And if Patreon's not your thing, I also have a GoFundMe account. And I'm also a member of the websites DeviantArt for Affinity and Ink Bunny. So if you're a member of any of those sites, like you can go ahead and start following me on there. And uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me, give me suggestions, you may do so, like either leaving me a comment um, on this video or reach out to me in any one of the um, um, websites that I mentioned and I'll leave all that stuff in the link section below. Uh, I know I said that last time, but I didn't do it for that video, but I'll get around to it right now. So anyway, um, thanks for watching and um, had a lot of fun with you guys in the chat and hope to see you again next time, maybe for tomorrow's uh, sketchbook, uh, sketchbook tour. So I'll check y'all later. Sweet. Bye.